Hello and welcome to a CBK gaming review video. Today we are going to be looking at The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth by Fantasy Flight Games. <laughs> Let's look at content. Well, you certainly get a lot in the box. Um, the maps are made up of these tiles and you play using an app on either an iPad or a laptop. Or via Steam. Via Steam. Um, and all the tiles are numbered and the app tells you which tiles you need for each map. And it expands as you play, doesn't it? As you explore the map, new tiles are added. They're double-sided and there are lots of tiles. There's many, many maps to play on. Um, and also in between the chapters roaming the world, you come across battle maps. Um, so there's definitely lots of content there. Um, you've got all the different tokens and um, sort of the atmospheric um, tiles for sort of pieces of rock and walls. And yeah, there's, there's lots in the box. It's it's the usual uh, fantasy flight game. Um, it's that there is a, a large amount in the core set, and of course we're going to get expansions that are going to add yet more obstacles, more characters, and you can already see that in some of the wordings on some of the skills that refer to other dwarves when there's only a single dwarf Gimli available to play. Um, at this moment in time, I think the there's there's six player um, characters and it plays between one and five. So you can play this solo or you can have five players. So there's always going to be the option to change uh, the who you actually play at some point. Uh, and depending on the number of players and who you're playing, the app adjusts the maps and what little bits you can interact with accordingly. Because we played it just the two of us, mm -hmm. didn't we? And did one map, played the same map with another friend. There were three of us, and there were we were finding different parts to interact with in a cave that wasn't there when the two of us were playing. And it just gives more for the more yes. players. It doesn't become easier. The app balances it out. Yes, sort of with what uh, you do. Yeah. It, it's a typical um, app-driven fantasy flight game, and their app-driven their app games are very good. If you enjoy app-driven games, we understand some people don't. Um, personally, I really enjoy this. This this comes across as uh, a mix of Mansions and Madness um, and Descent, but we'll talk about that a, a, a bit later on in the review. For me, uh, the, the content is a 9 out of 10. It's yeah. I'd, fantastic yeah, quality definitely. solid nine um so that leads on to the quality and as i've just hinted at it is excellent quality it's the usual quality one would expect from fantasy flight there are some already on etsy some interesting um individuals have done some 3d prints of some of the terrain tokens uh, there's other bits and pieces. We've been taking bits from other games like Conan um, and uh, uh, Massive Folklore, Darkness. Massive Darkness, yeah. and use some of those to enhance some of the battle board that we've been playing. Um, there's a time when you're in a pub, so we've just put um, barrels, barrels down and tables. and tables just because it gives a good feel to the game and, and, and is... Uh, draws the immersion a little bit more and I think the Etsy some of those ones offered on Etsy are really interesting and we'll put some of those links down below in the comments um, so that people can see where we've found various bits and pieces that enhance the gameplay if you're interested the same as this uh, I did see on Etsy there are acrylic tokens we really like those we really like them for a lot of the other games that we've got they add some longevity to the game um, yeah. but if you don't want to go <clears> to that expense the quality this of this excellent. is, yeah, it's, uh, it's the usual fantasy flight 
it's good card stock the boards are nice and solid yes i mean the figures are really good quality as well yes yeah. uh so as we say nine out of ten for me and uh, one for me fun factor uh <laughs> yeah aside from the fact that it's lord of the rings something which um my mum and dad introduced me to when i was very young i have a love of tolkien's works it it gives I, it really does the music on the app that that yeah. drives things is very reminiscent of music used in the television um or well, sorry the, the the movies the um the radio play that uh, yeah. with john lamesera which yeah. i just remember as a child there's there's so many different things which bring me back to moments where I've been reading Lord of the Rings or um, we've been watching Lord of the Rings. But it's not the normal, it's not following the story of the books. No. This is completely different stories but set in that world with some of the same characters. So you get a feel that it's, you're not repeating the story that you already know. You don't know where this story is going to go. You're no. just in Middle Earth with Gimli or with Bilbo and going on this adventure this time and it's yeah it it's, really it does really is good it's re reminiscent of Lord of the Rings and, and some they've of done the a mechanics. fantastic job I mean I, I am a huge fan of Mansions of Madness I'd love the game and a lot of the mechanics have been put into this so if you already play Mansions of Madness you can jump straight into I mean you can anyway but yeah, I, I really enjoy the way this game works and it's, it is so much fun. Yeah, we've played it uh, between ourselves uh, with several friends and each time it's been different, each time it's been great fun. We've lost and we've won, yeah. um, I think, on equal measure. Uh, it's, you have to think, I do think some of the characters are stronger than others. I certainly yeah. felt Legolas is very powerful, um, and Gimli again is is a good fighter. Yeah. Um, I have yet to try Bilbo. Um, I, 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 at some point, I shall have to play a Hobbit. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it's it gets a ten from me. I absolutely love. It. I've fallen in love with this game. It's it's wonderful. I, I'm going to give it a nine. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly harsh, but I, I enjoy this as much as I enjoy, enjoy folklore, which mm -hmm. for me is my go-to storytelling game. Yeah. So, yes, it, I, I, I would opt to play this. The only thing that we do have to say, this is only a campaign game. If you want to sit down and just play a single game in an, uh, an evening you can, but it'll always be that first that first chapter chapter yeah. that first story. This requires a group to say we are going to play through X amount of stories and get to the end. It must be mentioned as well at the moment. There's only one story, um, yeah. so but they they will add more. Yeah, I mean they've said about expansions and add-ons and mm -hmm. bits and pieces. So. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be one-off stories that if you've got a group of friends that just come around for one evening, you can introduce them to the game without them feeling they're starting a campaign which they're not going to continue. They can just have a one-off, mm -hmm. try this little one-set adventure, and then a couple of months later, now we've all got the time, let's start a campaign together. But at least they've been introduced to it and they want to play it. Otherwise, it's a big commitment to say, we're going to do the campaign. Mm -hmm which for us, we love doing, but we've got other friends that we don't see that often, but we think they'd enjoy this, but that's where we need the one-off yes. one element to it as well. Yeah. So let's look at the complexity. Because it has an app, it tells you what you need to do. It tells you how the monsters work. It tells you where to lay tiles for the map. It is very easy, but there are also a few areas where people, I think, will always fall foul, such as only retaining four cards in your hand. Yeah. Um, the, the skill cards, 
when a word is in bold, you have to spend that card. And I think because they've chosen to do that rather than state discard this card to do X, there's been, I've certainly seen on, on quite a few forums where people say, how does this work? Um, how do we, do we do all of the things on the card or do we have to choose one of them? Yeah. Um, so my understanding... And that's something that you pick up through playing the game. It's sort of four, four stories in, four chapters in. You then go, oh, it's meant to be this way. And you which, then realise like you may days. have done it, a li- yeah, but you may have done it a little differently to begin with, which hasn't hugely affected the game. But yeah, to be a little, little better in the rules, I think stating discard this card rather than it just being in bold. I don't think it needs to be in the happen. rules. It should be on the card. Uh, yeah. That that that's. Yeah. I think the these cards, and and there are various sets of cards. There's a set of basic skills. There's a set of career skills so every character chooses a career um, and then their own personal cards the career cards eventually you you earn um, experience or law um, that allows you to buy new skills and sometimes they will say that this is an innate ability and it's just simply written out then you have some bold writing and that's when you can actually discard the card to do that bold action um things like strike which allows you to do more damage um so you can enhance an attack or sprint, hide or sprint, sprint further, yeah, get um, and movement. scout there's a couple of others um, and i'm sure with any expansion there's going to be more um, as we've seen in all the Mansion of Madness and Eldritch Horror, Arkham Horror, they always yeah. add new and interesting um, mechanics to their games. Until you have thousands of cards. <laughs> um, but other than that, it is really easy to pick is. up. Yes. And the app will guide you through as well. It's yeah, I, I think it's a nine out of ten for me for complexity because it is really easy to pick up and. I'm going to okay. give it an 8 um, because I think there are some things they could have done better. Just seeing a lot of the questions on the forums, obviously uh, some people have had to ask questions or haven't been able to find the answers. And that's not just, some of that's English speaking, so they're saying the rules um, and then the um, translation into other languages. I've certainly seen some people say that's not as good as they should have been. Um, so 8 out of 10 for me. Okay, uh, replayability. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but as we were saying, because the number of people that you play with and which characters you play with changes the same chapter, um, it can easily be replayed. Um, I mean, even the different skills that each character has. If the two of us played the whole series with one set of characters and then went back to the beginning and played again with a different set, because of the different skills you can do, we're going to pass and fail different tests. So it's going to be a different adventure. And then you add more people into it and the maps change again and the encounters you have change. I think there's, you're you're absolutely right. There is a a high level of replayability here. It's reliant on a few things and that's, they are developing a new story. So at the moment there is a single adventure they are doing another one. I think it's the Bones of Arnor um, that they're adding. There is a lot that goes into these. There's a lot that goes into the app. There's a lot of interaction that you can apply to the story. And actually, as, as we've said, we've played this through... Um, we actually have done three, um, three different yeah. playthroughs. Each one has been different. Our successes have changed how the story has gone. Our failures have changed how the story has has progressed as well. There are six characters to play. It's a five player game. There's obviously the opportunity to play another set of different characters. I think any expansion is going to also include new characters. So there's also going to be um, enhanced replayability in that way. So. I, I will give this an 8 out of 10, but the caveat is that we have a new story, perhaps new modes, as you say, we may be able to play this as a, a single game um, in an evening. I think they 
need to add some expansions and it's fantasy flight they're going to yeah um, we've seen you've seen it with mansions elder Torah, etc um, but that has to be my caveat on a, an eight yeah. out of ten oh, I'd, I'd go with an eight as well because it is replayable but you're still at the moment going to be going through the same story so chapter one it's going to be here's a here's b but the journey to there is going to be different but you're mm. still going to end up at b ready for the next chapter so yes at the moment i'd say an eight but i think with expansions that could change in time so overall um for me this is a nine yeah it is a nine out of ten yeah I think there's a few things I'd like to, to, to mention um, that don't put me off, but may put some people off. The To make the game work, the mechanics, they have given, obviously, wounds and, and their fear, fear yeah. uh, mechanic. One thing that they've done is they've made Legolas... He can't take many wounds. That's fine. I, I don't see him as being as robust as Gimli. But Legolas can sustain a great deal more fear and terror or gloom than Gimli can. Uh, that, that didn't sit right with me. It, I, it's, I can see that it's a mechanic and not necessarily how I view Gimli and Legolas from the books. From a character point, it would be very different, but to make the game mechanics work, there has to be a balance. So they've, yeah, I can see what they've it done. It doesn't but... diminish from the gameplay no. for me. It doesn't no. diminish from my overall enjoyment of the game, but it would be wrong of me not to mention it because I know that there are some people that I think would not like that and the way that they've done that and would perhaps have preferred if Fantasy Flight had found another way around that. I think in in the overall way that it plays through, it it doesn't uh, make make much difference. Um, but what I like as well, I will point out, you get when the monsters start appearing. If you have two of the same appear in different squares, one gets a banner, so that you can actually tell on the board mm -hmm. which monsters which. So when the app then says this group advanced towards Legolas you're not going hang on which ones were they you know exactly because they've all got their mm -hmm. banners of their group together and i think it's a nice addition because we've had other other games where it's been they this group advance and we've gone they've all moved during the last round where where did these ones start whereas now it's a nice little extra that you can tell straight off who's attacking you i think the other thing that i need to point out is I have found this game a lot harder when there are only the two of us. Yeah. When there was Guy playing it, I found I found it a lot easier with three of us. Um, they do change. So the monsters have more wounds. The monsters have um, greater impact. And the threat level changes when you have more players i just feel that at the moment i found it much harder as a two, with yeah. two players um as we play it through more and more i mean we've played this through what, 14 15 times yeah. um or 14 15 games chapters we've played um i wonder if it's a similar mechanic to descent no um eldritch horror where with that one, depending on how many investigators you've got on the board, we get to see the mechanic because there's no app mm -hmm. driving it. And you get a card which says between one and two players on this particular turn, this happens. Between three and four players, this happens. So you know that having an even number of players is a slight advantage in that game. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's a hidden mechanic in here. It's just the way it happens to be that an odd number of players... It, it doesn't works it, it doesn't matter it, it, it's still a, a great oh, game yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as I say my overall score for this is is a nine out of oh, ten. Oh, definitely definitely a nine yeah yeah so if you enjoy Lord of the Rings 
if you enjoy fantasy games, if you enjoy campaign games, I genuinely believe this is a game you would enjoy. If you enjoy story driven games, this is very much um, for those sort of people that enjoy their. I want. I don't want to say role playing game in a box because that that is folklore. This is a campaign story driven game in in Middle Earth. I mean, <laughs> what's not to love? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's fantastic fun. I think go out and buy it if if you enjoy it. Enjoy Lord of the Rings. With that aside, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Uh, it means a lot to us. It, it, we really appreciate people's comments on on the the videos that we have been uploading, and we'll be looking at. Uh, the plans next are for us to do a review of Massive Darkness. Um, we're looking at all the sort of dungeon and story-driven games at the moment. We are going to the UK Games Expo in Birmingham. Yeah. <coughs> we hope to see some people there. Um, we're, we know that some of our friends are displaying their games. So a shout out uh, to Ollie McNeil. Uh, he's going to be showing a few games which look very exciting, very interesting. Uh, we look forward to seeing what he's going to be showing. Um, there's a couple of other. We're looking forward to seeing uh, Wotan games. Um, and there's a couple of other games that we're really looking forward to, to playing. Um, so hopefully if you've not got tickets and you're in the UK, go and have a look. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, time and a fantastic uh, opportunity to pick up games at some sometimes at cheaper prices. Uh, I suggest you look for Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm sure that it'll be there. I think it's going to be um, one of the games that are hard to find. I think it's going to go quite mm. quickly. Um, so, so, thank you very much. Thank you.